goes on And so do we Just how we do it is no mystery Sometimes the answer can be hard to find That's something I will never be I'm always here for anything that you need Rain or shine To share it all as life goes on We share it all as life goes on Done with the paper, done with the coffee, and you know what that means, Dreyfus. It's time to play sock! Sock! <laughs> Dreyfus, we do this every morning. You could not possibly have forgotten the rules. All right, I'll review them for you. It's really very simple. I shake the sock vigorously, you grab it with your teeth, and you pull and you tug, and for some reason derive incredible satisfaction from the whole damn thing. <laughs> All right, let's go. One more time here. <laughs> What's going on here, huh? What is this? Look at this, you hardly touched your food. It's not like you'd be picky about your diet. Last night you ate a cockroach. <laughs> Hey, it's not like you to be rude, either. It's great. Oh, how was the drive? Oh, it's a great car, Daddy. Carol got herself one terrific automobile. It is terrific, isn't it? Suddenly driving is such a joy. This is not like you to splurge like that. This is turning out to be quite a week. First the car, and then this morning, who should I get a call from but my lovely ex Husband. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. Gary called? What did he want? No, please let me guess. He has slept with every woman in the world and wants to start all over again. He wants to see me tonight for dinner. What did you say? What did, the man gave her the five worst years of her life. What do you think she said? Yes. She said yes. She said yes? What are you crazy? This is, that's a very, very bad answer. No was the correct choice. What does he want? He didn't say, but a couple of days ago, I ran into his friend Brad. I happened to look terrific that day, by the way. And Brad mentioned how Gary was still upset that I kept his fancy rowing machine in the divorce. Maybe he wants it back. Or maybe Brad told Gary how great you look, and maybe Gary wants you back. Now, now, that is crazy. That's a very illogical leap. That makes no sense at all. I had the exact same thought. <laughs> oh, all right, fine, man. I don't pretend to know much about this stuff, but there is one thing I do know, and that's what your mother would say if she were here now. What would she say? I don't know. <laughs> But it would be good, and she would speak for me, and that would also be good. And when she was finished talking for the two of us, you would cancel that dinner, and that would be the last anyone ever heard of it, except me, because you have to call me at the office to tell me what I'd said. I don't get this. I mean, your life was just starting to come together. Why would you want to see him again? All I want is to go to dinner with the man and be so sensational that it leaves him with an aching in his heart. And if it spreads to his groin, that's icing on the cake. <laughs> well, I gotta go home and change into my hooker outfit. Pardon? Police business, Daddy. There's a man that's been beating up prostitutes, so I'm going undercover, and I'm gonna try to lure him out. Thank you for sharing that with me, dear. <laughs> Let's go for that drive. Oh, honey, could we do that at lunch? I'm a little worried about Dreyfus right now. What's wrong? Well, mostly he won't play sock. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's something I'm doing wrong. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> yes, the 
shipment of bandages just come in, and it's 100% wrong. I ordered the Flintstone assortment, and there's not one bam bam in the whole lot. <laughs> not one damn bam bam. <laughs> Dr. Weston, are you absolutely sure it's just a cold? Positive. But the way he's sneezing and coughing. That's the cold part, Mrs. Burgess. Now, if Kelly were not sneezing and coughing, he would be what we call well. <laughs> You sure you didn't overlook anything? There's no shame in admitting it, you know. If it would make you feel any better, you could get a second opinion. You are my second opinion. <laughs> Mrs. Bridges, just take him home, put him to bed, and I promise you in no time at all he'll be back to his old self. Now, you say that, but I read an article the oh, other day. Oh, no, please, Mrs. Bridges, I thought we made a deal about the articles. I feel a CAT scan would be in order. <laughs> Really, yes. You do, eh? Yeah. The CAT scan. Yes. Oh, well, I mean, that never occurred to me. But then, what the hell do I know? I've only been doing this for 30 years, whereas you, you've read an article. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Bridges. We'll see you. Here, listen, you listen to me. You are going to be fine. You try on. <laughs> She's this worried about her young, and you really should be more patient. Here's the mail. All junk. Except for that thing from Ed McMahon. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Ed. How's the car? Oh, I got the car washed. It's looking great. I got a new dress. I'm looking great. I am completely ready for my dinner with Gary. Gary? Your ex-husband, Gary? That scum that slept in every bed but yours. <laughs> I told Laverne a little bit about him. That's all. <laughs> Listen, are you sure you know what you're doing? I mean, this dinner began as a curiosity, then it became a revenge, and now it's a new dress. I'm just afraid you're setting yourself up. I just want to show him that I'm not the same sweet, naive little pushover he was married to. I've come a long way these last two years, Daddy, and I want him to see that. Now, come on, change your jacket. I'll go downstairs and get the car. I hope she knows what she's doing. I mean, I do hate that ex-husband of hers. Back home, we don't have exes, just husbands and corpses. <laughs> well, that was very good. Good. Would you like some dessert? No, thank you, Gary. Ordinarily, I would, since weight is no longer a problem for me. <laughs> but tonight, I don't want to fill up. You see, I'm meeting a man after I leave here. Yes, you mentioned that several times. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I'm forgetful. Mm. <laughs> what? I just can't get over how great you look. Oh? You really look terrific. I know. <laughs> Eat your heart out. You're still angry, aren't you? Even after all this time. I'm only sorry we didn't have children, so I could turn them against you, too. <laughs> but enough of this. I am a modern woman, not one to dwell in the past. Keep moving forward, that's my motto. Oh, by the way, did I mention that those few things I used to be reluctant to do with you sexually, I now do all the time and really enjoy it? Yes, you did. Good. I wanted to be sure to get that in. <laughs> Well, I am glad that you haven't lost your sense of humor. I always loved your sense of humor. Gary, <clears throat> can I ask you something? Sure. Not that it matters, but why all the other women? I never understood that. I mean, I thought we were pretty good together that way. What can I say, Carol? Time passes, people change. Besides, look at you. I left the scene and you started to thrive. Well, I don't know about thrive. No, no, don't apologize. It only makes what I have to say a lot easier. You see, the reason I wanted to see you tonight... Gary, wait. Don't say it. I can't. I mean, an occasional dinner, fine, but there is just no chance of us getting back together. Why would I want that? <laughs> I, I just wanted to see you so that I could give you this. It's the final alimony payment, and I just wanted to give it to you personally. Carol, you knew it was ending this month. 
Of course. Notice, I didn't write blood-sucking leech on the memo line this time. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I, I, I have some plans uh, uh, for tonight, and I know that there's this man that you uh, have to see, so, you know, you really do look terrific. Take care of yourself. Monsieur said that you would take care of this. Come on, drink this. What is it? It's hot cocoa, just like your mother used to make when you were upset. Always made you feel better. That's when I was a little girl, Daddy. I'm not a little girl anymore. I know, but it, it may help anyway. Come on. Where's the marshmallow? <laughs> what? The marshmallow. Mom always put a marshmallow in it. I don't have any marshmallows. Great, like this is really gonna help without a marshmallow. <laughs> oh, I got here as soon as I could. What's the emergency? Barbara, sweetheart, you look so... slutty. Daddy, I told you I was working undercover as a hooker. Now what's wrong? Carol's alimony just ran out. That's why Gary wanted to see you. Now I'm gonna have to sell my condo and my car. Carol, you're working now, and the alimony wasn't that much anyway. You didn't even want the alimony. We made you take it. Rice. I'll be eating a lot of rice from now on. <laughs> Leave it. I'll drink it straight. All right, well, I'll make a little more cocoa, and I'll bring you some cookies, huh? <laughs> oh, Dreyfus, it's not a pleasant scene out there. How are you doing? Huh? Yeah? You up for a game of sock? Let's go. Dreyfus. Your nose is still warm. You know what that means, don't you? I gotta take you to the vet. It's not a fair comparison. Gandhi had it much worse than you do. Hi. I just stopped by to... Whoa! What have we got here? I'm working undercover as a hooker, and now is not a good time. Are you kidding? From where I'm standing, I could have picked a better time. Go home, Charlie. I can't. Why not? Because I don't think I could move now without hurting myself. Do you have your gun on you? My, my. Aren't we testy tonight? Something wrong? No. Hey, something is wrong. No, it's not. Your eyes are red. You've been crying. Coco. You've had another crisis, haven't you? Charlie, leave her alone. And that's why you're here. Carol's had another crisis, and you're here to help her through it. Whoa, I'm good. So, what is it? What happened? None of your business. Ah, judging by the tears and the cocoa, it's got to be something big, something important. Ex-husband. Gotta be the ex-husband. He is good. So, everything okay now? No. I knew it was a long shot. Charlie, are you helping matters? No. Then leave. I don't want to. I'll give you these cookies. Okay. <laughs> I gotta go, too. Are you gonna be okay? Sure she's gonna be okay. Come on, tell her. I'm just gonna go home and get into bed and start my new life of poverty in the morning. <laughs> See that? She's got a plan and everything. <laughs> Dreyfus. 
Dreyfus seems perfectly healthy to me, Dr. Weston. There's, there's some mild gastric distress. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, but his nose is warm and he won't eat. Well, that's perfectly normal in these cases. Excuse me, you don't seem to understand, Dr. Ross. He won't play sock. <laughs> have you tried different socks? Of course I have. I'm a doctor. <laughs> Listen, can I talk to one of your associates, someone older than my tie? <laughs> You wait here. I'm, I'm just going to go take a glance at Dreyfus's test. Test? What, a glance at a test? This is very casual. <laughs> oh. oh, Dreyfus, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you. You are my best friend in the world. You know that, huh? And I must love you very much being this close to your face and you having that breath. <laughs> I think we found the source of the gastric distress, and it's nothing to worry about. Really? You see that thing there? I can't be sure, but it, it looks like a piece of cloth. <laughs> no wonder you didn't want to play sock. You ate sock. What is that? Oh, Dr. Ross, I don't know how to thank you. You have been so very patient with me. Oh, well, I, I didn't do anything any other doctor wouldn't do. I mean... We all go out of our way to be understanding with people who are worried about their loved ones, don't we? Yeah, I mean, we do, but there are some doctors out there. Who, you know what I mean? Okay. Daddy. Oh, am I interrupting anything? No, no, I was just going through some old photo albums, cutting Gary's head out of all the pictures. I, mean, I could come back some other time if you're busy decapitating. No, come on in. I just made some coffee. Want some? Uh, yeah, yes, I will. Thanks, dear. <clears throat> oh, you missed the head. I asked my boss for a raise today. She said no. So I put too much toner in the Xerox machine. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Listen, honey, I came over here tonight because I'm worried about you. I just want to make sure you're okay, and if you have any financial problems, I mean, I'm here for you. That's very sweet, Daddy. Thank you. But I can't accept any money from you. Why not? Because I love you. You took money from Gary. I hate him. You are a complicated woman, Carol. What do I do with this? I throw the heads in here. <laughs> I'm so sorry to be putting you through this, Daddy. No, come on, don't be sorry. I'm just sorry your mother isn't here to help. She was so much better at handling these things than I am. I mean, I didn't even know about the marshmallow and the cocoa. What's wrong with me, anyway? Other women go through these things every day. They don't fall apart. You're not falling apart. I'm cutting heads out of photo albums, Daddy. That's not good. <laughs> I hate Gary for doing this to me. So, okay. I mean, he's out of your life now forever. Oh, and that's supposed to make me feel better? Doesn't it? Yes. No. I don't know. You don't know? Well, you know, uh, are you sure this is about money? I mean, maybe there is something else going on here. The only thing going on here, Daddy, is that there is no more alimony, no more checks, no more envelopes with Gary's handwriting on them, no more excuses from Gary when the check is late. This isn't about money, is it? You're right. It's about the end of a relationship. But we had the world's worst marriage, and I hate the man. I mean, I really do hate him. Obviously, look what you cut off in this picture. <laughs> so why is it killing me that the last thing we had together is gone? I must be crazy, right? Well, maybe a little, but, you know, we all are. So when does it stop hurting, Daddy? 
Uh, uh, when? I don't know when, but I know when it will. You remember that red tie with the blue checks your mother gave me for my birthday? Of course. I used to wear it practically every day. Well, after your mother died, I couldn't wear that tie anymore. I tried a couple of times. Couldn't do it. It mean, it hurt so much. And then one day, I was getting dressed for work, and without even thinking, I had put the tie on. And it was OK this time. In fact, it felt so good to have it back. I don't know what changed exactly, but I think it had something to do with time and acceptance. Uh, this probably doesn't make any sense to you at all. No, it makes a lot of sense, Daddy. I only wish there was some way you could go through this for me. <laughs> I wish I could, too, baby. <laughs> but I gotta go. I have to cruise Biscayne Boulevard to see which corner your sister is working. Daddy. Mom couldn't have handled it any better. But for God's sake, next time, get some marshmallows. 